Bill McCauley, brain tumor removed from the left hemisphere. Roland Blanchard, cerebral vascular injury. Francis Lynch, the same. Pat Carroll, bomb fragment injury in the left hemisphere. These are aphasics. They differ in their abilities and disabilities. They vary in their capacity for relearning and for adapting to other people. Here is a man who was injured in the visual and auditory sensory areas of the left hemisphere. It resulted in formulation aphasia, dysarthric symptoms, dyscalculia, and alexia. He was injured when the destroyer under his command was sunk. His name is... Commander Erickson. The destroyer is sinking. D-Day. Erickson has regained certain language skills, some at the fourth grade level, others as high as the eighth. He intends to start a small business when his speech becomes adequate. This ambidextrous veteran was injured principally in the left hemisphere, but also on the right. My name is Leonard Lloyd. I was hanging in Germany, 1946. He had some visual agnosia for words, some auditory agnosia, severe agraphia, motor aphasia, amnesic aphasia. He had right homonymous hemianopia and constriction of the left visual fields, residuals of right hemiparesis and Jacksonian convulsions. He intends to keep on in the field of woodworking. My name is Shigeru Kawahara. I'm from Hawaii. Kawahara has left hemiparesis and weakness of the right leg, moderate acalculia and dysarthria. He spoke pidgin English and had semantic aphasia. If he read for more than 20 minutes at one sitting, he developed a headache. In a year and a half of retraining, he has come a long way in speech, semantics, and social adjustment. He now goes to agricultural college part-time. I am Jack Previtch. I got hit 1944 bomb fragment. This 29-year-old patient was hit during the Battle of San Lo. All four lobes of the left hemisphere were damaged somewhat. He had a right hemiparesis, amnesic aphasia, dyscalculia, ataxic speech, severe dysgraphia, dysarthria, and motor aphasia. He has recovered sufficiently to become an outpatient. My name is Gage Rodman. I was wounded in the abdomen on Okinawa in 1945, April. The wound later resulted in infection and four brain abscesses, two in the frontal areas and two in the parietal region. Gage Rodman had a quadriparesis lack of eye convergence, agraphia, motor aphasia, dysarthria, and amnesic aphasia. He is making excellent progress toward better language and social skills. These patients are typical of some of the varied disabilities which present themselves to the aphasia clinic. The testing procedures for each incoming patient, however, are much the same. Abilities and disabilities are evaluated so a retraining program for each individual may be put. There are 140-odd test procedures, physical, neurological, and psychological, full for use as indicated. In examining the aphasic patient, one must rely frequently on objective signs and communication by gestures, much like working with a foreigner who understands no English. In the routine neurological examination, it's determined whether the motor projection fibers have been involved by the lesion. If so, there will be a defective voluntary control of the muscles on the opposite side. The affected limbs are usually spastic, and deep tendon reflexes are exaggerated. The Babinski sign is normally present. When the sensory projection tracts are damaged, sensation will be diminished on the opposite side of the body. One must deduce this from a difference in the patient's reactions to stimuli.
damage to the visual projections may be evident as a visual field defect, quadrantic or hemianopic. Some patients may show many motor and sensory defects, as this one does. Others, however, may not show any neurological dysfunction other than their aphasia. Another important step in the evaluation of the patient is a study of the electroencephalogram. It's used not only for diagnosis and localization of abnormal cortical activity, but also as a gauge to the patient's progress. The electroencephalogram allows one to foretell to some degree the eventual outcome of the patient's condition. A psychological evaluation is, of course, part of a testing procedure. It presents special problems, however, in dealing with aphasia. When an aphasic has lost his means of conveying ideas to others, he is unable to take language-type tests. Suppose we try this one. Read this one out loud, and then give me the answer. All right, you listen while I read it. If a man buys eight three-cent stamps and gives the clerk a half dollar, how much change should he receive? No. Okay, we'll go on to something else. You had some of these the other day. I want you to start here and find your way out. Often, neither visual nor auditory language communication are available to the patient. The maze type test, however, is one of the methods of evaluation not requiring the use of language. The patient's performance in this and other tests showed that his level of intelligence is 14 years. That's fine. There are several matters that must be taken into consideration in evaluating the intelligence available to the aphasic patient. There are the pre-morbid academic intelligence, the post-traumatic intelligence and achievement test, and there is the post-traumatic ability to adapt. In the course of recovery, continuous language type testing affords a valuable index. This patient has been able to take intelligence tests using language for the past year. He has scored higher on each successive test as his language skills were relearned. All right. How are horse and dog alike? Horse and dog? Oh, they're, they're both animals. All right. How are clarinet and trumpet alike? Well, that's because they're both instruments. instruments. An evaluation of personality is another essential. One of the most useful psychological tests for getting at the personality of aphasics is the make a picture story, or MAPS test. In this, the patient is given a number of background pictures, some suggesting specific situations and some not. He is asked to put people in the picture from the selection of cutout figures. The examiner observes which figures the patient chooses and where he puts them. This projective test can yield much information about an aphasic's personality, even though he can't describe the situations he creates. Some of the disturbances in his fantasy thinking are indicated by differences in his behavior toward background suggesting specific situations and those not, by overattention to detail, by general loss of social inhibition, and by concern with his own hostility. And then, of course, the nature and extent of the language dysfunction itself must be studied. One of the tests which helps this determination is the Schultz color reading test, in which the patient is asked to sort colored chips into the correct squares on a grid.
This tests three distinct functions. Recognition of color, response to the spoken instructions of the examiner, and response to the written language in the squares. Rapid fatigability is a characteristic of most aphasic patients. This is especially true soon after the injury or in the beginning of the retraining course. A patient will frequently fail in a test if he must do it in a concentrated period. On the other hand, if he is given a great deal of encouragement and plenty of time for relaxation, he may complete it perfectly. In addition to the problem of fatigue, the typical aphasic is easily distracted. Noises which would be ignored by others may destroy his concentration. During early retraining, distractions must be minimized to provide good conditions for performance and relearning. Rooms should have carpeted floors, upholstered furniture, and drapes. Wherever possible, there should be sound absorbent ceilings, closely fitted doors, appropriate signs, and noise-proof hallways all contribute to successful work with aphasic patients. The 102526 form is the basic document in the patient's record which summarizes the results of the tests. It prescribes a course of language retraining based on the patient's individual needs. Language therapy for aphasics may be divided into three main areas. Patients are given treatment for motor aphasia, sensory aphasia, and formulation aphasia. Motor aphasia means the loss of ability to produce speech due to a lesion in the motor speech patterns of the brain. Sometimes it also includes agraphia, which is a loss of ability to write due to a lesion in another motor area controlling this function. Sensory or receptive aphasia is the loss of ability to comprehend spoken or written language. Language formulation is usually the most difficult problem in retraining because it requires a combination of many patterns, auditory, visual, and motor, to produce complete thoughts grammatically and with meaning. When language formulation is disturbed, the results may range from difficulty in expression to complete jargon. It's important to remember that rarely, if ever, are any of these aphasias found in an isolated form in the clinical situation. All of them overlap to some extent, and treatment always involves work with the language function both in its separate parts and as a whole. This patient is relearning motor speech. Hello, Weasley. Yes. How are you today? Yes. Fine. Good. Have you relaxed long enough there? Yes. Good. Perhaps yes. you can ask me how I am. How I you. Very good indeed. Yes. He has difficulty repeating words orally due to a loss of motor speech patterns. A mirror is used in these early stages so he may learn tongue and lip positions through visual copying of the Very therapist. Good. I guess we're all ready to work on a new word then, aren't we? Yes. We're going to try the word man. I'll show you. We'll work in the mirror. Let's look in the mirror now while I try it. You just watch. Man. Man. Now, let's try that very first sound. Well, your lips are together, it's a humming sound. Good, now do it again. Now watch in the mirror and see if we can put the first two sounds together like this. Ma, ma. In fact, you almost got the word out. Man. Now, once again, your lips are together. Man. Fine. All right. Now we're going to go over to the last sound. 
Let's try that by itself. Mm -hmm. You're beginning to do it. That's very good. That's fine. That's good. I think we're ready to put the three sounds together like this. also includes a graphia, which means loss of the motor skill to write. The inability to write could be due to a loss of associative patterns, but that would be a disturbance of formulation and not a true motor pattern loss. Gage Rodman is a true case of a graphia, though two years of retraining have done much to restore his motor skill. Shall we try that sentence you were practicing on last week, Am I Cold? All right. Did a nice job on that, eh? And the M is pretty good. That's our difficult letter. Let me help you with that one. All right. I'll hold your hand over the pattern of it, and you just let me guide you. Frequently, each pattern must be relearned the patient using as many methods as possible. Actual hand guidance plays an important part in the relearning of patterns. Kinesthetic methods are usually the most helpful. All right. You go ahead now and try that last word, cold. All right, let me see if we can straighten out that final D. That's it. Once more on that one, too. All right, well, you got some pretty good patterns today. In our second category, sensory aphasia, the disturbance is to the functions of visual, auditory, or tactile understanding. This patient can't recognize certain words and sentences he hears and is unable to recall their significance. All right. Will you replace the lap board now, please? I'm sorry, I don't get it. Will you put the lap board down now? I don't know. What do you want? The lap board. Put it down. In the process of retraining, the undamaged sensory channels are used to reinforce those that are damaged. Here, the clinician uses various avenues of approach. She writes the word and then pronounces it with distinct lip and tongue movements so the patient can see how the word is produced. All this helps him in forming the correct auditory image. Watch me closely now, Dr. Hess, and say this after me. Lap board. I'm sorry? Okay. Try to say it now as I do, Dr. Hess. Lap board. Uh, board trap? No, I didn't it. Now you have it turned around now. Turn it around and try to say it again. Lap board. What was that again? Watch me closely now. Watch where my tongue is when I begin. Lap. Lap. Board. Say it as I do. Lap board? That's it. Oh. Lap board. And lap board. I'll try to trace it. Lap. The patient has also learned to get the feel of the word by writing it with his finger. This, too, is helpful. Good. Now put the lap board down. Mm-hmm. 
Similar methods are used in retraining sensory aphasics to read. Our third category is formulation aphasia. This type of aphasia is evidenced by the inability to use words properly. Sometimes the problem is in finding the correct word. This is called amnesic aphasia. Sometimes the problem is in the use of wrong words or paraphasia. This patient has both, resulting in difficulty in the selection of words to express his thoughts. Now I'm going to play this back. I want you to listen for your mistakes and correct them. techniques for retraining this patient is in helping him to learn to recall the proper word and to formulate with correct syntax. This is done by letting him hear his own errors. The therapist helps him to understand these errors and helps him to form correct patterns for word sequences. They attacked us? Oh, sure. They Where? attacked us. Well, they attacked us. On two places. Harbor, Harbor, Pearl Harbor, and what was the name Pelopines. of that place again? Where? Pelopines. One problem in retraining the aphasic is his great frustration and discouragement. This occurs because his insight and knowledge usually far outstrip his motor and formulation skills. A valuable technique for encouraging patients is the use of recordings made at regular intervals. These records, played back, provide a convincing demonstration of progress. This is Gage Rodman recording. Today is January 5th, 1948. During the past month, I have continued to work on my handwriting and speech. Now we'll try the one that you made the other day and see whether we can see a difference. All right. Today is December the 8th. 
1949. This is Gage Rodman speaking. I'm going to talk a little bit about the late Gargantua. Does that sound any better to you? Much better. As the aphasic patient begins to regain his communication skills, he gathers courage with the help of the clinical staff to re-establish contact with others, first of all with his fellow patients. Soon he is looking forward to leaving the hospital and resuming an active, useful life. I am going to do radio and television work. Hope I can get out in three more months. So I can go ahead and open my work workshop. I plan to start a small nursery and propagate plants. I'll be an outpatient, but I hope to go to college soon. I reckon I'll be around here for a while yet. However, I expect to take some retraining in zoology, then start to work. 